Tuesday, September 5th, 2023, Manaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today we're going to look at the concept of big government. Uh, Ronald Reagan, <laughs> even though uh, the uh, public debt under him increased massively, he's one of the top five presidents in the last 120 years. Uh, in terms of increasing the debt. He said in his inaugural address on January 20th, 1981, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. He was right about that. <laughs> Unfortunately, he did not act upon it. We can debate why, but this is not the uh, purpose of this video. purpose of this video is to show that once government gets involved in the economy, all it does is create problems that become even worse. And unfortunately, most people demand that the, the government <laughs> comes and solves those problems uh, that it created, which makes no sense whatsoever. And, and I'm going to give some examples uh, of what's happening here in the UK for that today. Uh, before I start, just wanted to let you know, I interviewed uh, Sam Laurie, who, who uh, founded a, a company called Adams Bullion with John Adams uh, of Australia. Uh, really nice young man. Uh, I posted it uh, early today because of the time difference. Um, trying to time it so Australians can see it. Uh, we spoke about everything, about gold, silver, but also the uh, derivatives market, the foreign exchange market. He's very knowledgeable. Uh, I'm going to put a link to it above in the, uh, in the cards and also in the description of this video. It's in, uh, entitled The Highly Leveraged Forex Market is a Ticking Time Bomb. So I highly recommend it for my, not just for my Australian uh, followers, but for everyone around the world. So back to uh, Ronald Reagan. So here, here he is uh, actually saying that. Government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. So let's quickly go through here <laughs> top five presidents who contributed to the debt by percentage. So the top dog is uh, FDR, as you can see, uh, the debt under him uh, increased by just over a thousand percent. Well, <laughs> uh, there was a, a paragon of big government and war, of course, uh, Franklin uh, Roosevelt. Uh, he spent a lot on the uh, New Deal and on World War II, so it's not surprising. Woodrow Wilson as well, another war president. The debt under him went up by 723%. And then it drops quite a bit, uh, I have to admit, but under Ronald Reagan, uh, the debt increased by 186% which sounds weird <laughs> if you heard what he's you know when you hear what he said there why did that happen i don't know some people will argue that uh, he was threatened <laughs> he was warned and uh yeah he he was shot of course just a few months after he was inaugurated maybe that was a message for him and then he played ball uh number four is Shrub or George W. Bush. He increased it by 101%. And number five was Barack Obama by 74%. And if you scroll down, uh, Donald Trump, uh, the debt under him increased by 33.1%. It increased by 6.7 trillion. Of course, he only had one term. Under Biden, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, what it will be uh, it will probably be a bit more than uh, than trump i think uh, under uh 
Trump, where did it finish? Uh, well, it finished at 26.9, so we're almost at 23 now, so that's uh, about 6.1 trillion. I I'm sure it's going to get higher than 6.7. So a lot of people, and I'm not defending Biden, a lot of people are blaming Biden for the massive increase in the debt. But if you want to blame anyone for planting the seeds, the modern seeds, you can blame uh, FDR, Woodrow Wilson, and Ronald Reagan. So many of you know that I'm a proponent of the Austrian School of Economics. And unlike the Keynesians, uh, the Austrians espouse uh, minimal government, free markets, sound money, and freedom. Uh, the Austrians believe that individuals are or should be free to decide what, what they do with their money and that government shouldn't interfere in the marketplace or any other kind of activity. Um, yeah, government is just there to defend the realm or, or the borders of the country. And that's about it, the rule of law. Um, and defense, so to speak. So, and the Keynesians, on the uh, on the other hand, they think that uh, any time there's some fluctuation in economic activity to the downside, that the government should get in there and uh, tax the public or spend extra to boost economic activity. They 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 don't believe in. Uh, a natural uh, cyclical way of things, that things are never going to go up forever, that they have to correct. And, uh, and, and they're scared that the animal spirits <laughs> of, of people are not going to wake up and that uh, people are going to uh, hoard uh, their savings and they're not going to spend. So, so that, that's, that's the, uh, the mentality we've had since FDR, the men who uh, increased the debt by over a thousand percent. And it, it hasn't only happened in the US, it's happened here in the UK and, and most other Western countries. And they've spread this uh, philosophy all over the world. And what it does, it, uh, <laughs> it, it just makes government find find more and more crises so that they can solve the problem. So they sometimes even create the crises in order to provide the solution. And in the UK, we've seen a great example of that in the last, uh, well, it's been happening since the, the end of World War II. And it's to do with uh, something I hadn't really heard much of before. It's called RAAC which is uh, an acronym for Reinforced Autoclaved Aerated Concrete. So it's supposed to be reinforced, so you think, oh, that's good concrete. But no, it's much cheaper concrete. And why did they come up with that? Well, after World War II, the UK government was hard up, bankrupt, <laughs> not just from World War II, but World War I. Yeah, always government, right? So they, they thought that uh, they needed, <laughs> uh, and that's the Keynesian mentality, to, to increase the public sector, increase spending. They're going to take over the health system. They're going to take over schools and, and a lot, lot of other things. So they used this uh, concrete, R-A-A-C, to build schools and other uh, public sector buildings. And now uh, it's uh, transpired that uh, a lot of these schools and buildings that were built with this concrete are collapsing. <laughs> and uh, people are clamoring for the current government to spend as much as they, ha they have to to fix the problem. And I say it's going to be even worse in maybe 20, 30 years because they're not going to do the right thing. Governments never do the right thing, things because 
Jeremy Hunt or <laughs> Rishi Sunak, they're not going to be around in 30, 40 years. Whoever decided to use this concrete in the 1950s and 60s, they're not around anymore. And that's the problem with governments. And the uh, so here's the story here. It, it's a big story here in the UK that they've had to close quite a few schools just as the, the school year has started in the last week. Uh, very disruptive. <laughs> and they've used it as well to uh, put a lot of children in uh, kind of lockdown mode. What do I mean by that? Well, working, uh, not working, excuse me, uh, studying from home online. And I think that's part of the, ad the agenda. They've known uh, about these uh, reinforced uh, or RAAC. They've known that it's not fit for purpose since the 90s and probably even before and they haven't done anything about it so it's not to do with one party or another it's just a political establishment they never do the right thing and another example here in the uk and and why am i focusing uh on the uk am i picking on the uk no it's because i live here uh, in other countries there are a lot of other examples too maybe you can uh uh, write about it in the comment section and I'll try to read as many of them as possible. Well, the other one is uh, the fact that uh, rental prices are going through the roof in London uh, and mainly it's because the uh, buy-to-let uh, mortgage rates are going through the roof and what's government got to do with that? Well, if you... <laughs> Go back to 2008 when the UK banks were going to collapse. What did the government do? They didn't let them collapse, right? <laughs> it would have been the best thing. And I said that at the time. And I keep reiterating that would have been the best thing. That's what Iceland did. I know it's a smaller country, but they let their banks collapse. They put the bankers in jail and they're fine now. They should have done the same thing here. But no, the UK government intervened, put us, you know, uh, took on uh, hundreds, uh, if not, well, hundreds of billions of pounds in debt to to keep the banks going. Uh, it uh, made the Bank of England, yeah, and the Bank of England isn't independent. It made them basically create the money out of thin air to buy that debt that they had to issue to bail out the banks and keep the property market going. So that meant as well that people could still afford to, to buy houses, to, to buy houses to let, because rates up until recently were near zero. And now uh, everything is reversing because these kinds of uh, shenanigans when you go against nature because interest is the price of time and you can't cheat time. You, you can't pretend that uh, time is not a cost. When that, that reverses, everything implodes. And so now we're seeing a huge problem in London. And what's this going to do? Well, my opinion is that... Um, it's going to keep uh, the cost of living crisis going for much longer because a, a lot of the people that have to rent, they're going to have to ask for more from their employers in terms of wages because, <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be a snow, snowball effect. And it's always government, always government that creates the problems by trying to kick the can down the road. Uh, back in the 50s after World War II, they, they tried to kick the can down the road uh, by uh, socializing everything, by creating socialism. They thought that uh, that would solve the problem, even though they were fighting against socialism in World War II. It's just crazy. And uh, after 08, they thought that a debt problem that almost well, that should have collapsed the banks, should be solved with more debt. So you get my uh, my gist. And uh, 
you can bet that they're going to try to help out the property market. That's something that they always do. It's what they do in Australia as well. Sam Laurie said uh, yesterday when I spoke to him that uh, the Australian economy is based on um, housing and holes. <laughs> so the housing market and mining. So there you go. So let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's almost uh, 9 a.m. London time, actually. Uh, I'm a little later than usual. Uh, we got spot gold at 1936. It's down about two and a half bucks. The high has been 42 and the low 35. Uh, spot silver is getting hammered, <laughs> um, but it's not real silver, is it? I mean, these are just speculators who probably have never held a coin or a bar. So I'm not concerned. I'm going to keep stacking my silver. We're down 40 cents. Not sure why. It's probably the bullion banks. It's at 23.57. So we're right on the lows here, down 1.6%. The Dow futures is down 50. Uh, NASDAQ futures uh, is down 56. S&P is down 12. To the currencies, uh, sterling is down half a percent, 125.66. The euro is down a third of a percent, 107.56. Uh, the dollar uh, is up a third versus the yen, uh, almost up to 147. 147.09 has been the high, so the yen continues to flounder. Uh, the dollar is up a third versus the U1 at 730.15. Let's check the uh, dollar versus the ruble. Uh, dollar is up 2.3% at 97.50. Uh, commodities, uh, WTI crude is down two thirds of a percent, just below 85. Brent is trading at 88.20, down about a third. Uh, platinum is down uh, just over 1% trading around 945. High grade copper is down seven eighths of a percent at 380. And uh, we'll finish off with the treasury market. The 10 year yield is up five basis points at 422. Here in the UK, the two year is uh, at 524. So not much change there. And the 30 year is at 480, up about four basis points. So with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.